It is well known that the most famous Islamic monument of the world, the Taj Mahal, is in India. What is not equally well known is that the second oldest mosque in the world is also in India, in Kerala. In fact, India has a vast and rich architectural heritage of Islam. From Kerala in the south till Kashmir in the north, from Tripura in the east till Gujarat in the west. With the advent of Islam, Arab traders became the carriers of the new faith. Behind me here, you see the first mosque which was made in India. It was made in Kodun Galur by Raja Cheruman Perumal. It was made in 629 AD within the lifetime of the Prophet. Kail Patnam is an ancient town on the mouth of the Tamira Pirani River. It is about one kilometer from its mouth. The Kodal Karai Mosque was built here by Arab traders as early as Hijri 12 or 633 AD. Kuwatul Islam was the first mosque built by Muslims soon after the conquest of Delhi. This mosque was built in 1193 and here every inch of the maksura is beautifully carved. There are a number of Quranic verses also very beautifully written on this one as if it has been written on wax. Some of the medieval writers have used this word that it is so beautifully done that it appears that it has been done on wax. On stones it was not possible. The most impressive monument in the Qutub complex is the Qutub Minar itself. It was made in the early 13th century by Qutubuddin Aibak, Sultan of Delhi. It is one of the world's tallest minarets and is 72.5 meters high. In the meantime, Islamic influences continued to grow further south in the Deccan. The end of the 15th century saw the establishment of five sultanates in the Deccan. These were Ahmednagar, Bijapur, Golconda, Bidar and Berar. The Sultan of Bijapur was a descendant of the Ottoman dynasty of Istanbul. The Sultan of Golconda was a Turkman prince who had taken refuge in India. The Sultans were followers of the Shia sect of Islam and were close allies of the Safavid rulers of Iran. In India, the Deccan became the greatest center of Arabic learning and literature. The Gol Gumbas in Bijapur is the tomb of Sultan Muhammad Adil Shah, the successor of Sultan Ibrahim Adil Shah II. Muhammad ruled in Bijapur from 1627 to 1657 AD. This is the largest dome ever to be built in the Islamic world. It measures 37.92 meters on the inside. We have, in fact, one very remarkable example of an architectural transplant from Central Asia. This is the great madrasa of Mahmud Gawan from the 1480s in Bida. Now, if you would take a photograph of this and put a label and saying madrasa in Uzbekistan or part of um, eastern Iran, it will be very hard to tell the difference. 1526 was a year which changed the political map of India. It was the year of the advent of Babur, 
who founded the great Mughal dynasty. The dynasty founded by Babur became one of the greatest the world had seen. They ruled a vast empire whose fame spread throughout the world. Humayun's tomb, which might be considered the first great imperial masterpiece of the new dynasty, sponsored by the 20-year-old Akbar in memory of his father, is very much related to the previous architecture of Delhi. Then we look at the design of the tomb itself, with these earlier systems, which were already well entrenched in India, like the little domed chhatris, the different colored stonework, and we place all of those around a central dome which is in white marble, an Indian material, not a Middle Eastern material, but the dome is bulbous. It has this sort of shape and it's a double dome. And it's something which was brought into India from the Timurid tradition of Uzbekistan. Agra was the imperial capital of Akbar in the mid-16th century. The fort here was one of the most powerful of North India since early times. In 1565, Emperor Akbar ordered the reconstruction of this fort. The fort has palaces of Emperor Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan. The most prominent amongst all the structures are the white marble buildings of Shah Jahan. In 1571, Emperor Akbar decided to build a new capital city. A magnificent city was built at a site not very far from the previous capital at Agra. It was called Fatehpur Sikri. Fatehpur Sikri is one of the best ordered and symmetrically laid out cities of the entire medieval world. The world's best known tomb stands testimony to a timeless love story. The Taj Mahal was built in 1648 by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his beloved wife Arjumand Banu Begum known to the world as Mumtaz Mahal. The construction of the Taj Mahal was a stupendous engineering feat. It is built of marble and finely inlaid with semi-precious stones. 20,000 workers and master craftsmen labored for 17 years to erect this magnificent edifice. In the mid-17th century, the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan built a new imperial capital at Delhi. He made his palace inside the great Red Fort, which he built on the banks of the Yamuna River. The Divane Arm, or the Hall of Public Audience, is where the emperor would hear petitions of the common people. The Divane Khas is the Hall of Private Audience. These structures are among the glories of the Red Fort. India has a vast living heritage of Islamic architecture. These monuments are a great treasure of India's culture and many of them are recognized as World Heritage Monuments. We see in these the confluence of local talent with inspirations from Iran, Arabia and Central Asia. These mosques, tombs, madrasas, palaces and fortresses are a beautiful and unique treasure of the heritage of Islamic architecture. 